Hey friends, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Wendy and I'm with Inspire Ministries. And as always, I am so glad that you have landed on today's video. Today, I just wanna talk with you. I don't have a five point message. I don't have a laundry list of Bible verses to give you today. I'm not gonna lecture you and I'm not gonna give you a very long winded message today, but I wanna talk to your heart. I wanna check in with you because I think it's important. I think it's important that we be checking up on one another now more than ever. How are you doing? How are you truly doing? This question stems from a series of conversations that I have had as of late with people who are hurting, people who are filled with anxiety, people who have dread in their life, people who are angry, people who are confused, who are in pain, and who have long felt like they've been suffering. And so if that feels like it's you today, I want to talk with you today. I just want to touch base with you and ask you, how is your heart? And yes, I have an agenda for this message. Yes, I have just a few things written down that I want to communicate to you today. But more than anything else, I just wanted to sit down and check in on you and see how you are doing. Because maybe Maybe you're hurting. Maybe you have been feeling overwhelmed as of late. You'll notice that I'm not even filming in my regular spot today because I really felt like the Lord impressed this upon my heart as I was getting ready this morning. Wasn't even planning to film today, but I know that someone needs to hear what I have to say today. And I think that someone out there needs to be checked in on. Maybe no one's checked up on you in a very long time. And so I'm asking you today, how how are you? I want to talk today specifically about something that is on my heart, and that is what do you do when you don't feel as close to God as you once did? How do you draw closer to God? How do you experience the Lord in your everyday life? I feel like it's something that I say regularly in all of my videos. Draw close to God. Spend time in His Word. Be in the presence of the Lord. But I feel like sometimes we don't accurately know how this is done. We don't know how to do this. And so I want to talk to you today about some of the things that I think are very key things to settle in our life as it relates to getting closer to the Lord. Number one, I would say this, if you feel like you are struggling today, if you feel like you are having a hard time drawing close to the Lord and feeling like you are experiencing Jesus as you once did, I would tell you to do a couple things. The first couple things that I want to talk to you about today is still yourself and quiet yourself. Still yourself. Get quiet. I was talking with someone recently, someone who's just gone through a major heart operation, someone who really knows that she shouldn't be tackling large projects right now. She shouldn't have any large tasks on her to-do list. And she says, I just feel overwhelmed. I don't feel like I can hear from the Lord. I prayed that he would do X, Y, Z, and he hasn't done X, Y, Z. I pray that he would hear me all the time and I feel like he is not listening to me. And I would tell her this. I would say, get yourself still. Get yourself quiet. Get yourself in this place where you and Jesus is all that there is. Listen, I would tell you the same thing that I was telling myself a few years ago. I had a major operation as well several Augusts ago before we moved here to Indiana from my home in Michigan. And I remember it was the same year that my husband lost his job. It was the same year that we sent my daughter off to college away in California, 2,000 miles away. And I was so overwhelmed. I was so overwhelmed with all of the things that I needed to get done, all of the things that I needed to be doing, but I had this major surgery where I was forced to have to sit. And I have never in my life experienced Jesus more in that season 
ever in any other season of my life. I was so close to Jesus in that time because I took advantage of that stillness. I took advantage of that quietness. I got in a place where it was just him and me. I didn't have the distraction of anyone near me. My daughter had moved away. My husband was at work all day long. I had every opportunity to still myself, to quiet myself, and take advantage of that time spent just between him and me. The next thing that I would tell you if you are struggling to get to this place where you feel Jesus again, where you feel like you are in partnership with him, where you are experiencing Jesus, I would tell you this, cleanse your environment. Cleanse your environment. Now, what do I mean by that is get rid of the things in your life that are causing sin to still reside in your home. Just get rid of those things. If you are watching movies that you know you shouldn't be watching, if you are engaged with activities that you know are not God-honoring, if you have bad language that you are bringing into your home from your workplace, let's say, whatever it is that you have in your home that is not God-honoring, that is not holy, that is not pure, that is not allowing you to develop a godly place um, that is harboring any kind of ugliness and filth, get rid of it. Just get rid of it. Maybe that's porn. Maybe that is, like I said, something that you watch on a regular basis. I, I'm going to tell you right now that there are certain shows that I would say to steer clear away from. Some of these shows that are on my list, I'm sure, are things that maybe you watch or have watched, like Stranger Things, like uh, the Kardashians, like MTV, uh, like, um, let's see, some of the other things that I think that I have seen are like The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, shows like that. Things that maybe you know that once you watch them, your mind begins to be filled with all kinds of filth. And maybe those are just some things that need to go in your home. I'm telling you, they play a large role in how close you are to Jesus. They play a large role in the environment that he likes to reside in, that he likes to dwell in. David says all throughout the Psalms about a pure environment, about a allowing the Spirit of God to reside and dwell in that place. And so it's very, very important that we get our mind wrapped around what is it that needs to go in my life so that I can foster this environment for Jesus that he likes to reside in, that he likes to take up residency in. The next thing that I would say is confess any known or unknown sin. Listen, I am not trying to condemn you or make you feel bad or guilty about anything that you're doing. The same questions that I use as a filter system here in this video is the same questions. They're the same questions that I ask myself, the same filter system that I will be asking myself moving forward. What are any known sins in my life? And what are any unknown sins in my life? What are the things that I am involved in that I might not even be aware of? God, would you show me those things. In addition to cleansing our environment, I believe that a huge factor of that is to repent of any known sin or unknown sin. It's just something that I think that we have to be in the habit of doing all the time. I think that we have this idea that once saved, always saved. That we have this idea that once we are saved, we have no longer any need to repent because Jesus has forgiven everything that we did, everything that we're doing, and everything that we're going to do. But I'm telling you, as a believer, it is vital, it is necessary to have this regeneration, to have this ongoing repentance so that we can become more holy, so that we do not have that veil between us and God like it talks about in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. The other thing that I would say it is very, very important if you find yourself in a season where you are far away from God is get back into his word. Listen, I know I talk to people all the time who tell me that they don't understand what they're reading. I talked to a woman the other day that told me that actually 
reading the Word of God makes her more frustrated. She said to me, Wendy, I just don't feel the comfort in Scripture like you do. It actually gives me more anxiety. It actually makes me even angrier because I do not, I do not understand what I'm reading because I just don't understand it. Listen, to that I say read. Keep reading. Do it. Like I said in a video recently, it is not a feeling, it is a decided obedience. Listen, if you are far from God, one of the main reasons that you are far from God is because you're not in his word. If you were in his word, if you were reading about who Jesus is and what he says and what he expects of us and how we are to live righteous lives, and if we were learning from some of the greats in the scriptures, I'm telling you, reading the word of God gives us this refining process in our life. And so that is one of the things we have to keep coming back to is read his word every single day. The thing that goes hand in hand with that is communing with the Father, having constant communication with God. All throughout my day, I talk to him all throughout my day. I talk to him when I'm watering my plants. I talk to him when I'm making dinner. I talk to him when I'm in the shower. Sometimes I even talk to him in my mind, in my head, as I'm having a conversation or as I'm engaging with people out and about, having conversations with people, um, talking to the woman who is taking my order at a drive through restaurant. I'm constantly doing those things. A great example of this was yesterday. I encountered a woman who was so filled with rage. She was so filled with anger. She was behind me at the line in Meyer as we were self-scanning our items out of the store, and she was so ridiculously upset. I don't know what had her upset. I don't know what made her frustrated. She was yelling at the machine. She was swearing. She was dropping things. And as she was dropping things, she was getting more frustrated. And in that moment, it is my nature to like look at this woman and think, how ridiculous is this? But listen, I had a change of thought. In that moment, the Lord allowed me to think this. Pray for that woman because she's going through what all of America is going through right now. She is going through a lot. There's a lot of things that have distracted us in our walk with Christ. There's a lot of things that are vying for our attention. There's a lot of things to be upset with if we were keeping our mind on the world. And so I immediately began to pray for that person. That is daily allowing myself to communicate with the Father. And I think that's hand in hand with reading scripture. The more we read scripture, the more we fall in love with Jesus. And the more we fall in love with Jesus, the more we want to tell him about our day. We want to communicate with him about the things that are on our hearts. And so that will naturally be the overflow of what happens when we read scripture is we will automatically want to commune with the Father and vice versa. When we commune with the Father, when we spend time with God, we will automatically then want to spend time in his word. The other thing that I would say is this, refuse sinful living. And friends, this is huge. I think that we live subcategorized lives, which means I believe that we live com compartmentally. I think that we live like, okay, this is my life on Sunday. I go to church, I pray, I read the Bible, that's my church day. But on Monday, I swear like a sailor. On Tuesday, I'm engaged with line. On Wednesday, I gossip with my coworkers. You see what I'm saying? We do all of these other things. And I say we, I do the same thing. I'm not addressing any one person here. I'm not trying to make you, again, feel ashamed for what you are doing, but I think it's huge that we actually make an intention of our hearts to say, I am not gonna be engaged in sinful living anymore. At least be trying to work ourselves in that direction, refusing little things here and there. Maybe it's gossip, like I said, that you suffer with. Maybe that is something that you know that is something that is just debilitating in your life. You can't get away from it. You know that there are environments in your workplace that foster this, kinds of, this kind of thing. And so I would say to you, refuse it. 
just refuse it because I think that that is an important thing that is keeping us, that is hindering us in our relationship with Jesus. It is making it so that we can't get close to him. Why? Because even though the spirit of God lives inside of us, he cannot dwell in a sin-filled vessel. And so we have to make sure that not only is our environment clean, our home, our, our lives, we have to make a conscious effort every single day to refuse sinful living, to refuse those things that keep us in bondage to sin. Just refuse those things. Again, maybe it is engaging in conversations that you know you shouldn't be engaging in. Maybe it is, uh, like I said, the shows that you watch or the, the music that you listen to. Uh, whatever it is, you know you. You know the things that are keeping you in sinful patterns, whatever those things are. You know what those triggers are. And so I would say get rid of those things, refuse those things, and maybe not all of them at one time, but begin to make a list of all of the areas where you see sin in your life and just begin to check those off of a list as you work through each of those areas. The next thing that I would say that I believe is really, really important is put away all distractions. Put away distractions. What is it that is competing with your time spent with God? I know for me, for a number of years, it was anything else. I mean, you name it. Going to exercise, going to breakfast with friends, um, getting out in my garden, uh, going shopping, um, spending time on YouTube, scrolling through Instagram. Uh, there are so many things that I could say in my own life were distractions. I would say put away distractions, refuse those distractions, just put them away. Maybe you have small kids at home. Maybe when your little ones take their first nap, you spend time with Jesus. You get into the Word. You open up the Scriptures. And even if it's just a few lines, listen, I'm not talking about pulling out the commentaries and looking up the Greek and Hebrew words. I'm just talking about getting yourself to a pattern of spending time in His presence, spending time with Him. Even if that means locking yourself in a closet or in the bathroom for a little bit so that you can open up the word. Maybe it's involving your children. That's the best thing that I could think to do. Maybe you have school age kids. Maybe it is spending a few moments in the morning before they go to school, or maybe it's a few moments before their activities at night or as they're going to bed at night, spending time studying. Say, you know what, listen, this is what mom is studying right now. This is what mom is learning in the Bible. Let's learn this as a family. I believe that that's super, super important. So put away distractions. Listen, every single day, every single day, we ought to be reading something in Scripture. Again, whether it's one verse or whether it's 12 verses, whether it's 16 chapters, we need to be reading something in the Word of God. We need to be able to get that down inside of us. I would even say that when you read Scripture and you come across something that really sticks out to you, that you would write it on a sticky note or you would just write it on a piece of paper and you would carry that with you throughout the rest of your day. I think it's really important. Put away those distractions. Get rid of those excuses that are distractions in your life. Yes, those other things are really good. Yes, spending time with your kids. Yes, going on vacation. Yes, getting up in the morning and being active and exercising. All of those things are good things. Sometimes we think only the distractions that keep us from God are bad things, and they're not. They're just distractions. They're anything that points us in a different direction other than Jesus. The other thing that I would say is this, and I believe it's huge, and I feel like I've said it all the time, I say it on repeat, and that is be consistent. Just be consistent. I think consistency is key. It is for me. Consistence builds up a habit for me. And so over time, I just begin then to pattern myself after doing the same thing. So if, for instance, I wake up in the morning and the first thing that I do is I go to the Word and I read something and I study and I do my notes and I journal and I get really involved in my Bible study and in my quiet time, if I do that regularly every single day, then I'm more likely to continue to do it 
it because it's now a habit. It's now a ritual. It's something that I just do. Uh, I used to for a very long time after I became a stay-at-home mom 12 years ago. I used to go through days where I wouldn't even shower. I'd be like, okay, I didn't really do anything. I didn't really go anywhere today, so I'm not going to take a shower. And then I think it was about the time that we moved here to Indiana. I'm like, I need to just make that a part of my day. Why am I not taking time out of my day to take care of myself, to wash my face every day, to wash my hair, to, you know, to, to get ready, to put on makeup, to, to actually look presentable every single day? Why am I not doing that? And so I just began to incorporate that in my day. And so now it's a habit. Now it's something that I don't even think about. It's something that I do right after my quiet time. I just do it. It's just natural. And so what do you need to do in order to, learn in your life to be consistent because when you do anything over a course of time sometimes they say what it is like 21 days to form a habit three weeks to form a habit actually after you do that thing so consistently it becomes habitual it becomes part of your nature you don't have to think about it you don't have to make a conscious decision to do it you don't have to make any effort to do it it is just something that you will naturally do it's like getting up in the morning it's why i am a huge advocate for just waking up in the morning and getting into your quiet time it sets the tone for the rest of your day and so if you make that a part of your daily ritual you will be able to be consistent and i think it is when we are consistent that we see the greatest amount of spiritual growth I think it is the main reason why so many fall back in their faith is because they lack consistency. And it does take diligence. It does take intentionality in the beginning. And then over time, it will be just something that naturally is an overflow from the choices that we've made. And then I think the last thing that I would say is reduce the noise reduce the noise. Choose well what it is that you are giving your time to. Choose well what it is that you are choosing to listen to and who you are choosing to follow and listen to. I think it matters. It matters so much. Reduce the noise. Listen, you and I have every opportunity for noise in our life. We have the radio, we have YouTube, we have Facebook, we have Facebook ads, we have families uh, you know, that come over and noise within our homes. We have distractions at work. We have noise, noise, noise. We are inundated with so much every single day. And I would say reduce the noise. Reduce the noise and be very picky about who you listen to. Be very picky with your time. Listen, there's nothing more precious than your time. There's nothing more precious than your time. And so be aware of where you are spending in your time. Be aware of where you are allowing your mind to go in those idle moments of your life. It matters. It matters. It matters. It matters. Choose wisely who you are listening to and what you're listening to, what you are allowing yourself to feed on. It's very important. So I think that these are some really important things to think about as it relates to our spiritual growth and as it relates to how we are doing in our spiritual lives. How are we growing with Jesus? How are we experiencing him on a daily basis? basis? How do we draw close to him intentionally? These are some of the things that I believe will help us to do that. I want to end this message because, again, this is just a heartfelt talk between friends today. I want to end this by saying that you need to be checking up on your friends. You need to be checking up on those that you love Pay attention to what they're saying or what they're not saying. Listen, I have read recently, uh, it's probably been two, it was two suicides that I've read about maybe in the last three or four days. And each in each of these cases, I have read about suicide prevention. And I've read hashtags that say, check up on your loved ones. I read a devastating post that one uh, person wrote about this other person who had taken his life this past weekend, just a 19-year-old kid who probably felt the weight of the world on his shoulders, was a new dad, um, 
had everything to look forward to in his life, everything to live for, and yet felt so sad and so hurt and so probably distant from God that he took his own life. And so I would say if someone keeps coming back to your mind over and over and over again, if you maybe see them on Facebook and you haven't reached out lately, but you're really not sure if you should because you're not maybe that close as you used to be, God is laying that person on your heart for a purpose, for a reason. And so I would encourage you to reach out to that person. Listen, we do not know people's stories. We don't know what people are going through. We don't know what hurts that they are carrying around. We don't know what burdens that they are facing. We don't know what bad news report they just received. Um, There are so many people who are able, faithfully able and, and, and strong enough to mask their pain with a smile. Mask their pain with, oh, I'm fine, nothing's wrong with me, everything's good. And yet, it is so important that we check up on people, that we ask them the hard questions. How is your relationship with Jesus? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Can I share Jesus with you? You know, there are so many people in the faith right now, I read a statistic this morning that said that there are only 10% of Christians who are actually willing to step out in faith and share their faith, share the good news of the gospel. Why is that? That would tell me that there are only 10 champions of faith out of 100 who are willing to go forward and share their faith share their Jesus with other people. And so I would think that that statistic is as relatively high as that one is of people who are not checking in regularly with those that they love and care about. Listen, don't wait till it's too late. Don't wait until you're speaking at a funeral to talk good about somebody or to ask them how they're doing. Do not wait uh, for someone in pride. Don't wait for them to reach out to you. Listen, you be the one. You be the one that does it. You be the one that reaches out because you never know what your reaching out will do. You never know how just one small check in with someone can really change the trajectory of their life. You just don't know. And so I would really, really encourage you with that today. And I, again, would ask you to evaluate yourself. Check yourself, check in with yourself. Have check-ins with yourself. Self, how am I doing today? How is my relationship with Jesus? Have I confessed any known sin? Am I cleansing my environment? Am I communing with God every single day? Am I refusing to sin? Am I putting away all distractions? Am I reading the word of God? These are the check-in points that we can have with ourselves and with those that we love and care about every single day. Friend, I am praying for you. Again, these are challenging times. They are challenging times. And we have every reason in the world to be discouraged, but we have also reason to hope. And his name is Jesus Christ. And if you do not know him for yourself, reach out to me and I'll tell you all about him. And I'll tell you what he's done for me. And I will tell you what he can do for you as well. Friend, if you've liked this video, would you share it with somebody that you know and love? Would you reach out to somebody that you know and love today and ask them these hard questions? Ask them these hard questions because maybe nobody in their life cares about them enough to ask them of them. So friend, if you like this video, give it a huge thumbs up. Make sure that you subscribe to that channel and hit that notification bell to be notified for every time that I upload content just like this. Two to three videos every single week and I'm already looking forward to my next one. Until then, friends, have an awesome day with Jesus. Bye-bye.